fans welcome to another edition of the peristyle podcast i'm your host ryan abraham I'm joined alongside chris trevino we got to talk about usc's 45 17 win over the fresno state bulldogs of course this upcoming weekend trip to corvallis to take on oregon state and i uh, was out there at usc practice tuesday morning and let you know what lincoln riley and some of the players that we got to talk to after practice had to say about the big game over the weekend, the win at home in the Coliseum, and then also going on the road yet again for the second Pac-12 road trip and a tough matchup uh, with the Oregon State Beavers. If you're watching us uh, live on YouTube, welcome. Thanks very much for that. You can follow us over there, youtube.com slash Inside Troy. You might have noticed our Tunnel Vision intro. We got a little update on that one. So thanks to Chris for doing that. Different Chris. Uh, Chris Rash, he's been doing our, our intros and and updating that stuff so hope you guys like it some of chris trevino's but they are my clips your Ryan. clips in there So technically you weren't wrong true uh that the to see malcolm epps catching his touchdown at the very like not bad that ball was coming right to me ryan that's a great clip to be put in the in the intro so hope you guys enjoy the intro we had some like practice stuff in there now we got some actual games excuse me under the lincoln riley era uh we own the show all that kind of stuff there so and if you're listening on our regular podcast feed thank you for doing that peristyle podcast but you know if you want to watch this live we typically do it at 1 15 1 30 uh, on tuesdays after we get back from practice so we put it up on the youtube page and then you can uh, watch over at uscfootball.com listen on any of the podcasting platforms uh like apple Podcasts, google play any of those, uh, you can check it out. If you're on the Apple Podcasting app, we do appreciate you uh, leaving us a five-star review because that does help to grow the show. And we have a new one. We do? Chris, I wanted to, it's from John David. Okay. Maybe not John David Booty, if you guys remember that. Uh, five stars. He said, a must listen for Trojan fans. The Chris Ryan Shotgun team is top-notch and regular contributors such as Coach Hyde and Gerard Martinez provide thoughtful and well-informed views on all things USC. Fight on. Hashtag Team Cilantro. That's uh let's go. That's a shout out to you. That's a shout out to the composite two star recruits, baby. Yes. Also known as the cilantro boys to some who like to uh refer to for, refer to me and Gerard as that. So Cilantro Boys Nation. Love it. Out there. It is definitely out there. Uh okay. If you have any questions or comments for the show, we got a lot of questions this week. So we're gonna probably focus more on questions. It's a mailbag uh, show. It's more yeah, maybe a mailbag issue show. Uh, podcast at uscfootball.com is the email address. You can call or text us at 424-254-9141. I think we got three texts and three voicemails. Whoa. Uh, we got a bunch. We got a bunch of stuff that we want to get to, but we got to talk about our sponsor, Trader Joe's, before we jump into anything. Uh, fall is the best time at Trader Joe's. I uh, got a whole bunch of the Trader Joe's snacks here that we brought to the uh, first tailgate. Hopefully, we'll do, do another tailgate or two. And uh, Trader Joe's has been uh, kind enough to give us a whole bunch of snacks for that. But I want to go over, Chris, to the uh, – you check out the TraderJoes.com website, and you get good ideas. I, this was our, our, our dear friend, Keely Yor. I had her in mind for this one, even though she's not here anymore. But pumpkin choco chip muffins with pumpkin butter butter. First of all, butter butter back-to-back -back is good. These are gluten-free pumpkin chocolate chip muffins. I was waiting for the gluten-free drop. The gluten-free drop, yes. So they have great recipes. I love a goat over at TraderJoes.com. Go before, try not to be too hungry, but go to the website right before you're going to Trader Joe's. If you're too hungry, that could be a disaster when you go in there. But um, we don't want to like discourage you from shopping at our, our sponsor. But yeah, if you go super hungry to a grocery store like Trader Joe's, you're going to get in trouble. I do that all the time. I do, uh, but it's good. Um, pumpkin chalk oat chocolate chip muffins. So I want to check this out. So, you know, because we made our, we did our pumpkin, I mean, our uh, red off. velvet cu cupcakes. And I put chocolate chips uh, in there. On got the one. too fancy, Ryan. But know. no, they do. They weren't the the ones that got voted on. Didn't have the chocolate chips. Okay. In it. They said if they would have had the chocolate chips in it, it would have been a landslide. But oh, whatever. Okay. You know. <laughs> More of a landslide for me. Yes. Yes. No. yes, yes. 
<laughs> uh, but I make see, sure you go over to Trader Joe's and check it out. And if you're, you got another night game coming up, uh, Arizona State's going to be a 7.30 game, Chris. 7.30 p.m. Ugh. You're going to campus? Go over to Trader Joe's. Great tailgating stuff over there. And, the, man, I told you I went in there, like, on a weeknight. I can't believe how packed it is. Like, you talk to other people, like, oh, yeah, my dorm has a Trader Joe's at the bottom of that. Like, that doesn't happen a lot of places. I live so. above a Trader Joe's. Yeah. What, what a gonna, flex. What are you going to do? I'm going to go downstairs and grab something to microwave from Trader Joe's for dinner tonight because it's right there. The convenience it is. is outstanding. Very convenient. Okay. Well, let's jump into all the fun stuff. I just want to disclaim oh, real quick. Yes. Okay. Not about Trader Joe's. Shout out to Trader Joe's. Mm-hmm. But I was not at practice <gasps> this morning. When did... I don't know if you have a sound for that. Uh, something that can... We could do. I guess. I I had an appointment this morning. You know, real life happens outside of football season. So I was not able to attend. But I'm here now. Yes. And I think I have enough knowledge where I can get by. You definitely have enough knowledge. I have enough knowledge to get by. But I just want to put that uh, out there. Also, I'm a lot well rested. You know, usually I'm exhausted at this halfway point. You know, waking up at 5 a.m., 8 a.m. practice. I'm well rested, baby. So I'm, I'm here. I'm bringing the energy with you um, for you. No, I love, I appreciate that, Chris, because uh, we we need the energy. But no, you you deserve some time off because I don't. There's no time off in the season, Ryan. There's no time. There off is in no the season. time off in the season. Maybe um, maybe during a, a, a crappy season, but right now we're on a good season. You know, I love people in the comments. I'm putting some comments up here. Um, Shane, Hector, they're like smash the like button, smash that like button if you're watching us live on YouTube. It does help that, and you know, like wherever you can like us for something. Uh, please do, because it does help uh, everything. But I'll try to put some of your comments and stuff up. Um, I'll put some of your comments up here, and uh, yeah, when we we'll get to some questions. If you if you do have a question and you're watching on YouTube, try to put question in the beginning, and I will star it and try to come back to it later on. But we do already have like a lot of questions, so we'll keep the kind of you like to call it the cold open, Chris. Uh, we'll keep it a little brief. That's I branded. Guess. That's branded. Oh, then we won't. I don't want to. But you you I'll let you use it. Okay. We're under your uh, podcast umbrella. You can use it. Okay. Uh, we have a little bit of breaking news. So we are hearing word. I think it might have been you, Chris. I don't know. We're like our little text thread. Not that the people out there here are on our text thread. Maybe they are, but probably not. Uh, Gary Bryant Jr. Uh, I think you had heard that he was going to be redshirting. He was working with the scout team this morning. And uh, Lincoln Riley was asked about that. Like, Hey, what's going on? And he gave a pretty brief answer that was like, yeah, he's going to redshirt this year, or he's probably going to redshirt this year. Uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on that with uh, Gary Bryant Jr. It's an interesting you know, situation. Obviously, we know that USC's wide receiver room, pretty damn stacked, Ryan. You know, Jordan Addison, Mario Williams, Brendan Rice, Terrell Bynum, uh, CJ Williams, the new kid, Tosh Washington, Kyle Ford, Gary, a returning starter from last season who put over a hundred, uh, 500 yards uh, in receiving, I, b- I believe. So it was stack room, competition, all there. But to see at this point, we knew Gary Bryant wasn't really part of that rotation. You know, that early rotation, that, that non-garbage uh, time rotation, which a little bit surprising to me. You know, obviously he's a guy who had a good season last year despite – you know, the struggles of that offense, blazing speed, you know, a guy who might be the fastest guy on the team. Yes, more than Jordan Addison. He was running 4-4 out of high school. Dynamic returner, one of the best in the conference last year, punt returner. Hasn't even fielded a punt yet. I believe that's been Jordan Addison's role. He's taken all of them. So doesn't really have a role on this team. So it, when you do that, you you know, you opt to do the red shirt, you know, you see him on scout team. That usually precludes you is that the right word it usually foreshadows possibly setting up to you know go into the transfer portal seek elsewhere preserve yourself preserve a year of eligibility so that kind of feels like the writing on the wall I, again i'm a little disappointed not disappointed i'm a little surprised that gary hasn't been more of a factor for this offense in terms of trying to get him the ball whether that's in deep shots you know brings a lot of speed you know i've known gary a while Tough to, tough to see him, you know, not be a part of that rotation. There's guys that just aren't in that rotation right now. That's, you know, Kyle Ford, John Jackson, you know, Kyron Ward Hudson, and uh, Taj Washington are the guys from 
non-transfers that were, that were on the team last year that have sort of broken through to kind of be part of that top rotation. And it's been mostly the transfer guys that have kind of shined for this passing offense so far. So tough to see, you know, wish Gary the best wherever he decides to do. Kind of feels like setting up for a transfer down the line, you know, kind of preserving that eligibility, as I said. So, I mean, that's kind of my take on it. Yeah, that I mean, that's sort of the writing on the wall. And a uh, great kid, and you're going to wish him the best. Um, I mean, he's going to help. He's probably going to help the USC defense. If you have a scout team receiver like that, you know, usually have these, like, kind of short, slow dudes that aren't, you know, you get like a Gary Bryant Jr. that's uh, that's running in the, on your scout team. That's something. And, you know, they, I think Shotgun tweeted that there's limited windows now for when you can transfer, so he's not going to enter the portal right now if that's what he intends uh, on doing. Um, but yeah. Would you like me to read what his dad wrote on Instagram? Oh yes, that would be great. He, Cause he, he posted a photo on Instagram of, of Keeley's tweet about wide receiver Gary Bryan Jr. plans to red shirting this year. Lincoln Riley says, so he posted that, that screenshot and he wrote in the caption, never let anyone minimize you, uh, know your worth. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Your mindset is the preview to life's upcoming attraction. GB1. Sky's the limit. Y'all better pay attention. Boomerang to all the haters. I claim it. Okay. Can you, for us old folks, can you translate what that means? I think he's just saying like Gary Bryan has a lot to offer. Yes. Not being utilized uh, as he should. A lot of talent not being seen. Uh, he's going to come up somewhere. He's going to make place. I'm reading it as he's going to make plays in the future. I don't read it as it happening here at USC. Gotcha. Yeah. And it's interesting because Gary Bryan was actually recruited by Dennis Simmons and uh, Lincoln Riley out of Oklahoma. So yes. he, he kind of felt like it was a perfect fit to try to, you know, set him up. But for whatever the case, hasn't been, you know, making plays in practice to get enough to play on Saturdays in crunch time. So, yeah. So These are we'll going to be the kind of problems that you have once you rework the roster. Right. There's going to be good players that transfer because there's other good players that might be playing better or whatever. I'm not, you know, insinuating he wasn't playing as good, but there's going to be things that happen like that. And, uh, you know, it's hard to keep everybody that you want. Um, Plus, USC has some talent coming in at the position. You know, Zachariah Branch, Makai Lemon, Jacoby Lane, they're bringing in more dudes. So it's only going to get tougher. Jordan yeah. Addison's, you know, will be gone. But Mario should be back. Brendan Rice probably will be back. Terrell Bynum, you know, he's Richard Sr., so he's probably gone. But Zachariah Branch, Mikhail Lemon, two five-star guys coming in to, you know, compete for snaps and playing time and catches. So for sure. just, just going to get tougher. Um, also, there was some little bit of news about uh, – so you might have seen Raylick Brown in that Rice opener. And if you watch the intro on our YouTube channel, the Tunnel Vision, we got the, the Heisman pose he made. We just haven't seen much of Raylick Brown uh, after that. So uh, Lincoln Riley was asked about him. I mean, it sounds like he was still dinged up. He'd left that game, right? And uh, seems healthy now. So you might see a little more dose of uh, Raylick Brown up in Corvallis. I believe he got one catch in the Fresno State game. Came yeah. in uh, like a cut of an end around kind of throw. I think he got like six yards or something. Yeah, it just seems like he's kind of an emergency kind of dude right now just because, you know, you want to get the ankle healthy, ankle injuries. Yeah. Obviously – Tricky for running backs who, you know, got to cut, do all the things and do all the things that make them special, especially a guy with the athleticism at Relique Brown. So definitely want to get him healthy. He definitely is available. Obviously, you saw him get a snap, a, cat, a catch in that win. But just do the smart thing. Get him 100% right. You're going to need him, you know, in those against Utah, yeah, Washington State, uh, possibly this week, Oregon State. So just get him fully good to go on that ankle before you kind of unleash him fully moving forward. You know, and this isn't sourced or anything, but my, I have a feeling that this was a team that sort of, uh, I don't want to say held back against Fresno State, but they were like, Cortland Brown, I mean, Cortland Ford might have been able to play, you know, and he didn't. Uh, even when Haskins came out, like, he's healthy. Rayleigh Brown's healthy. It's like, Conference play. I feel like they were so almost like saving a little bit up for conference play again. Uh, does that make sense to you? Yeah, Chris? I mean, Ford looking at him on the sideline, he looked good. I mean, it felt like he was like emergency. Like Haskins goes down, Mason goes down, 
do we really want to throw Ford in? Yeah, because at one point after that disastrous drive where Mason kind of gave up that that big sack, kind of ruined that, and, it, and that whole drive went to to crap. I could see Ford on the sideline, like kind of like jumping, like it looked like he was gonna get okay, ready dude, to go in. in. Yeah. Like he was like, okay, okay, I might need to go, and I might need to go. And so it looked like he was warming up. So I think, you know, there is a possibility we could have seen him. But as Lincoln mentioned after, you know, get him healthy. They're going to need him, especially when they go up to Corvallis in a loud place with Bobby, you know, getting a little bit dinged up, but it seems like he's okay. I know Lincoln had an update uh, about that at practice, but just get those two big tackles healthy because, as we mentioned, you don't have a lot of depth on that offensive line. And that's a good transition. So I, the, a lot of the talk uh, Tuesday morning, I know you weren't there, Chris, so I'll kind of give a little summary. Way to remind me. Of just, uh, yeah, uh, was about the offensive line. Um, you know, I had asked actually asked uh, Lincoln Riley about Mason Murphy. He first said that the left tackle spot, they're all healthy. They're full participants. So Cortland Ford's out there. Bobby Haskins out there. So you got your six back. And, uh, you know, they were, it was looking a little shaky when – Ford went out and Haskins was going out. Um, I asked about Mason Murphy. He didn't, Lincoln Riley took, you know, he took blame. He said, yeah, the first rep was bad. He gave up a sack. But he equivalent, He said it was the equivalent of, like, asking a kicker to come out and kick a 60-yard field goal. So he felt he didn't put Mason Murphy in the first spot. career field goal. Yeah. Basically, like, here's your first shot. Go ahead and go kick a 60-yarder. Um, so I feel like, but he feels that he's good. I, I think you get some live reps for Mason Murphy. And you still got the other guys. Now you might be seven. Like now it could be like a seven deep thing because it was getting a little sketchy uh, in that game. But they should be healthy in that aspect of it. Um, so a lot of offensive line talk. Um, he you a lot of praise for Jonah Monheim, like playing like he's a young guy, but he's playing with a bunch of veterans and he sort of like is acting like a bunch of veterans. He had a funny quote about um, Brett Nealon, who I talked to after practice today. You know, he's not the tallest guy in the world. But he said he's not Rudy, you know, like he's he's a big dude. Like he's a big dude. He can move a lot of weight. He he said like like an Aaron Donald isn't 6'4", 320 pounds, but he just uses that leverage. He goes sometimes being shorter. Uh, I don't think he said the word shorter, but basically insinuating that like not as tall, you can get lower and get leverage. Like wins. Aaron Donald does. Yeah. So, um, so high, he was giving high praise to some of the the offensive linemen, um, just the way they were playing, and we got to talk to Monheim. We got to talk to uh, Brett Nealon, like I mentioned, talk to Justin Dietrich. All of those interviews are up on uh, our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Inside Troy, if you check it out. We'll have stories and stuff going up with all of those if you're interested in that. But there was a lot of offensive line talk and then running game talk. You know, just I talked to Travis Dye for a while and it was fun to kind of pick his brain because, yeah, I mean, he had 200 yard games in a row. Um, he's going back to Oregon, Chris. Like he played Oregon. This is basically his rival, right? He's playing this game. He's playing this uh, the he's, Civil War, right? Is that what they call it? Yeah. Uh, well, they don't call it that anymore. They stopped that because I think politically correct. I still call it the Civil War, but apparently someone decided that you don't want to call it that anymore. But he said Reacher Stadium. He likes playing over there. Um, so he's done this, you know, rivalry. And you know, I asked him like, is it like you feel a little, you know, is there any extra juice or whatever? And and he's like, yeah, I mean, he's like, it's something he's looking forward to. Like, it's the state that he played in for the last several years. So going back there, I think it's going to be kind of fun for him. So there's some interesting, I think, storylines, you know, coming out of this. But a lot of the talk was with offensive linemen and the running game. And, you know, you got to try to stop that for Oregon State because that's something they do well. Absolutely. And I'm actually making my first trip to Corvallis. I'm pretty excited about Ooh. that. i got to check that one off my, my Pac-12 uh, – Road trip kind of kind of deal, so I'm excited to go up there and see if USC can stop that run game because it is really really good. You know, you, Oregon State's offensive line averages about 305 pounds, I believe. They yeah. ran for 300 yards. Ryan, does that sound right? 300 yards on USC last season. Yeah, just bullied them absolutely relentlessly. First win since 1960. So USC. Got to come correct up in the trenches. We'll see. Big test. I think we're going to find out a lot about uh, these Trojans. For sure. And uh, I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned that because I want to. I didn't put that in my notes. But um, they ran all over. Uh, At US. will. I mean, it was it was not. US, if, if you, I know you've blocked out a lot of what happened last year. But USC in the Coliseum was dreadful. Like 
their best win, they didn't have that many wins, but Washington State, you know, on the road. Uh, they whipped up on Colorado, who's terrible on the road, but... Pulled yeah. out Arizona. Yeah, that was, like, lucky. Um, but lost Drake London. Yeah, draw, you, you, win, you beat Won Arizona. Won the battle, but yeah. Yeah, you, you beat a team that was going to go 0 for 12, and, except for COVID. They got to beat Cal late in the season. But you lost Drake London, who is your basically only good player on offense. Um, so, yes. Tuli Tui Pelotu spoke today. I didn't talk to him. I think it was RJ that talked to him. So you can check out his uh, video up there. He remembers. I mean, one of those big runs that Oregon State ran off was at him. Um, you know, Raylan Goforth talked today. And uh, that's something that these guys, especially if you're on the defensive side of the ball, they got pushed around. And I feel like, you know, if you're Shane Lee, if you're Jordan Addison, you're not coming in like, man, I want to avenge what happened last year. They weren't around. They didn't know. That. But there's guys that were. There's guys and, that have those scars. And there's a bad taste in your mouth because it wasn't like Oregon and like the Pac-12 championship game during 2020 come in pushing you around. Even like a Stanford who was bad last year. I don't remember if there was like the revenge stuff with Stanford because Stanford was bad. They, you know, they beat Oregon, they beat USC and they like lost their last seven games or whatever. This was Oregon State. Like, they just haven't been pushed around by a team like that for a while. So I feel like that's another thing. I don't know if it's in reserve, but there's some, I think there's some USC dudes that come into this with a chip on their shoulder. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about it more with the guys tomorrow that talk. Just that memory of just like getting absolutely, they got their, you know, pants pulled down in front of the Coliseum <laughs> by everyone. And you're just laughing at them. It was just, it was bad. And I know that was a surprising game. I, I remember feeling like, wow, they're just going to run them out of their own stadium. And that's what it felt like. I remember the celebrating by the Oregon State players in the locker room, you know, walking over oh, there. So, man. yeah, that's that's something you hold on to. You know, that's something like a Nick Figueroa hangs on to going into this game. And, and, and they take that on the trip with them up there. So... I'm sure a lot of guys, obviously the guys that were there last year on that defense, are they're they're carrying that with them this week in practice, and I'm sure they're going to be trying to get it to those guys who weren't here last year to kind of let them know, like, hey, this is a big one for us. This is a it's obviously a Pac-12 road game, undefeated night game, but there's a little extra something. You know, we want that payback. So, you know, that's what that's what is at stake going up to Corvallis this weekend. A little something, something. I like it. A little um, extra something, something. Well, we have a lot of questions. Yeah, so, so let's just get into it. Let's do it. I'm gonna, let's take a quick break. We'll come back and uh, we'll question it up. Voicemails, text, emails. And then, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, we'll get you in the chat too. Back in a minute. <laughs> All right, we're back here on the Peristyle Podcast. It's funny. So if you're watching on YouTube, there's no break really, but I put the little like, we'll be back in a minute, which is really more like, we'll be back in That's something. a few seconds. It lets me do something that yeah. I can't do on, on air. Where we're not, uh, where we're on screen and stuff. Uh, let's see. Why don't we go to a voicemail? We'll start off with this one. And this question is for Ryan and Chris. Uh, the flagship show of the Parastyle Podcasting Network. Um, I don't want to be the kind of guy who takes somebody else's gimmick, but wanted to shoot a food analogy to you and see what your thoughts were about it. I saw that uh, USC, uh, Chris posted that USC is ranked in the hundreds when it comes to total defense. But, you know, when it comes to scoring defense closer to, you know, 40th in the nation, averaging under 20 points a game. Is is total defense against USC like um, you know just eating empty calories, just a, a bunch of, uh, of cotton candy? You know, tastes you know, tastes good for the team. You know, it looks pretty, uh, but you don't get anything really out of it. I mean, how demoralizing is it for a team to march down the field? And have Eric Gentry slap the ball down when he gets to the red zone, and now you can't. Now, you, now you're down. You know, instead of you know going 14 to seven, you go 14 to three, knowing that it's about to become 21 to three. Anyway, that's my thoughts. Have a good one, guys. Eddie from Orange. Thanks, Eddie. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, I think our friends over at Rainer Troy. I don't know if they 
coined the phrase, the like the empty calories. But that's basically been like USC's offense, where like, oh, got 425 yards and scored 21 points or whatever. You know, it just there was a lot of empty calories. There was like some success that didn't result. You didn't cash in the success. Um, this USC offense cashing in success, and the USC defense is sort of allowing empty calories. Like here, here you go. Here's a, a, a garbage bag full of cotton candy. Eat that. But are you are you satisfied after? No. Food analogy. Yes. But that that was like, so Eddie took, I think that was a food analogy for, well, I guess he made that up there, but um, yeah, I think that was, I think the Rain of Troy people were talking about that, the empty calorie thing. Uh, but we, we've discussed it before too. I believe, because my stat pack where I kind of break down where, where USC stands, I just pulled it up just to look at it because I know that was a very... High, hotly debated topic, you know, the, the ranking of total defense, you know, number 83 in the nation I have here, 380 yards per game. Um, but it doesn't, it, it's correct in that it doesn't really tell the full story yeah. of what USC's defense is doing because opponent red zone conversions, it's 53.8%. That's number eight in the country. Mm. Obviously, USC is number one in turnover margin nationally at uh, top, I believe, Fourth in total turnovers with 10. So those are the things that kind of make up for, you know, giving up a bunch of yards, obviously. And I believe it was Solomon Bird who was asked in the presser, like, they don't get bonus points for explosive yardage right. for getting in the red zone. You know, if they keep them out, you know, they don't get bonus points for that. So that's that kind of feel that kind of uh, summarizes, you know, everything about the total defense and giving up all those stats. They're not getting bonus points for True. ripping off 50-yard run. It only matters if they get points on the board, and USC isn't allowing points on the board. Yeah, this isn't fa like fantasy. I'm in one fantasy league where it's just like you get bonuses for everything. Like the longer the touchdown is, there's more. It's not fantasy football. This yeah. ain't fantasy football. Like if you if you go 99 yards and don't score, you don't get like 9.9 .9 points yeah. with your fantasy team. You get none. Nada. Und Gott. Uh Peter in Fullerton says he emailed in. Why wasn't Caleb Williams taken out of the Fresno State game when the game was clearly in hand in the fourth quarter? Are they trying to preserve a redshirt year for Miller Moss? I don't know if they're trying to preserve a redshirt year because I think they want to give him some reps. I did think it was interesting because at that last drive, I was like, I mean, I think this is where you should just put in the backups at this point. You know, don't risk yeah. Caleb getting hurt. He's taking some hits. Your left tackle's a little bit banged up. It just seems a little bit risky to kind of go, go out there and – uh, trot trot Caleb back out there and kind of the ones and felt like the game was well in hand and you know kind of let those offensive guys, those backup offensive guys play a little more. That's what that's what I was thinking. I don't I don't really have an answer for you. Yeah, uh, same. I feel that's right. Um, let's go to Eric and Duck Country. When the defense has given up big runs, has it been due to overly aggressive blitzes and stunts, or are the players out of position? Thanks from Eric. This is more so a shotgun question because his yeah. rewatches are more detailed. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it's a little bit of both. You know, there are times when, you know, USC maybe is a little bit aggressive, they get caught in a stunt going to a little bit too slow. There's a whole, whole big gap there. Bust it. Or, you know, two guys maybe, you know, fill the wrong, fill the wrong gap or they, two guys in the same gap, things like that. And I believe Grinch mentioned this. Maybe I heard it wrong, mm -hmm. but he did mention like the kind of those big plays they give up. It's like it's like they're seeing it for the first time. Yeah, he said something about that. I maybe I shouldn't try to figure out what he said on the spot. But like people are doing things that you haven't seen. Yeah, that's kind of what it seemed like he was uh, getting at. I have to go back and listen to that. But that was something because I ran over to Austin Jones' interview. But that's like the last thing I remember hearing. Uh, from his interview so i think it's a bunch of things like a little bit seeing something new for the first time maybe being a little bit over aggressive and then you know i think there are still some some busts at times in terms of uh guys being on, not on the same page yeah no i think there's a combination of things um but we'll see i think there's gonna be more straightforward like this is gonna be a team that's kind of running at you they're not gonna run the slow mesh that's something that you've never seen before this should be You've seen what Oregon State's done. So um, can you stop it? They're running downhill at you. There's this big boy football. They proved it last year. So can USC step up and stop them? We'll see. Another voicemail for you. 
Hey guys, this is Daniel out of Los Angeles. Uh, not not a question, just a statement. I just want to say, Shotgun, put some respect on Lincoln Riley's name. You guys, last video uh, before game was putting too much hype and too much credit on Jake Hayner and Fresno State offense, and they're going to score 21 points, I mean 31 points and 28 points on USC's defense, and they got to watch out. Look, everyone knows Fresno State plays USC hard. They always do. That's their MO. But they don't win. They don't win, Shotgun. Remember that. They don't win. It's not It's not a scare or it's not it, – It's. It's, they don't, it's not something that the USC needs to watch out for at Fresno State. We know they play us hard, and they never win. And like I said, they weren't going to score 20 points on us, and they didn't. So put some respect on Lincoln Riley's name. He's not going to lose at Fresno State. And this is not Clay Hilton, guys. Like, in this Oregon State team, this is the same defense that Fresno State uh, carved up. What do you think USC is going to do to them? Put some respect on USC's name. Fight on, baby. Well, Shotgun's not here to uh... – Defend himself. Shotgun picked USC to cover the spread. I don't think he thought that USC. I don't think there's about respect on Lincoln Riley's name or on USC's name. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what to like, but we're gonna we're not gonna say USC's playing an opponent that's just terrible and they won't do anything and they'll get killed. Anybody can beat anybody in college yes, football. It can be like you're gonna. We wouldn't want to say, oh, Fresno State's god awful, can't do anything, and then Fresno State upsets or makes it close and you're like oh i didn't know i'm like we're gonna tell you what they do good jake hayner is a really good quarterback he might be the best quarterback conference player of the year last year yeah like he might be the best they won 10 games last year um jeff tedford's a really good coach listen to what lincoln riley said about jeff tedford after the game so that's not disrespecting usc when you talk about what an opponent can do well so just my opinion but as uh, I said, anybody can beat anybody in college football and on Sundays, but college football is wacky. Things happen. And maybe, yes, we're still a little bit, uh, a little PTSD from the Clay Helton era where, mm. you know, this is a very different game uh, last season, if this was played last season. So I think I think Fresno State deserved the respect that they were getting. Yeah. That we were giving them going into the week. No, I mean, respect. USC handled problem. their business because on paper, yes, USC should – Handle a team like Fresno State. They should, and they did. Um, and, you know, we'll get to – so, you know, just uh, house cleaning stuff. We will have another preview show that will be in podcast form if you're listening, like we always do. But also it will be live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter uh, with uh, Jack Smith. Our intern will be running the board. RJ Abadie will be in studio with him, and then Shotgun will be joining – uh, from his home on the East Coast. And then Chris Shotgun and I will all be flying to the Pacific Northwest to be there in person for USC's game against Oregon State and half of a research stadium because they're doing renovations. But that'll be Thursday night at 7 p.m. if you want to get to the preview show. So those guys will all be on it. And then Chris Shotgun and I, like I said, will be up in uh, Corvallis for the game. We got a text message from um, Alan Lee in Orange County. He says, longtime listener and fan of the podcast. Thanks for bringing us the cold hard truth through thick and thin. My question is, how do you see USC's defense holding up against Oregon State's offense? I believe their tight end, Luke Musgrave, is questionable for the game. He's actually out for the game. Uh, conversely, USC's offense looks like they're on fire with our left tackle health up in the air. Do you see USC outscoring Oregon State by at least double digits like Fresno State? Thanks, Alan from Orange County. Oregon State can run the ball really well. Mm -hmm. Chance Nolan, grown as a quarterback, He's can make some better. throws. Yep. It's an offense that if they're not going to turn the ball over against USC and they're going to pick up yards and they're going to run well against USC, I think it could be a situation where USC is in a bit of a shootout if they're not getting takeaways on these on the Beavers because – what what's the staple of a run a run defense that runs a run offense that runs well? Ryan is that they chew up they chew up clock. Yeah, they do. And keep it away from USC. Don't put the ball in Caleb Williams' hands. And that Lincoln Riley offense that takes away possessions, that takes away opportunities to put up scores. So it might be a situation where if USC can't slow them down or and can't get turnovers like they've been doing, you know, this could be a, a game where each possession is going to really matter and. You know, I think USC will find the stops in the end, but I think it could be a little bit interesting uh, 
for most of the game. I think we could see a little bit of an interesting game. I don't think Oregon State's defense is very good. No. So I think USC is going to score when they can. But the question is, can they slow down this run offense and get the ball back for for Kayla Williams and and this offense? If USC can do what they've done in the first three games, which is score touchdowns on at least their first three drives, Stanford it was first five drives, I think they'll win. Um, but, you know, do you get – does Oregon State get a stop or two? Their, their defense was pretty feisty against Fresno State. I think they're better uh, than they were last year on defense. Um, and I think Oregon State's going to run right at you, and we'll see how well this USC defense holds up to that. But I don't think – I don't see Oregon State outscoring USC. So, yeah, I think I think double digits is probably, uh, probably a pretty safe bet. Uh, let's see. This is another Eric and Duck Country email. If neither Ford or Haskins can play, because the uh, last one talked about that too, do you think the coaches should plug in Mason Murphy or should they reshuffle the line? If you reshuffle the line, what would it be? Thanks, Eric and Duck Country. Well, it sounds like they're both going to be available. Yeah. So I don't think you have to worry about that. But if you there might be a situation where you kick Andrew Voorhees to left tackle. Maybe move Mason Murphy inside. Or if you feel Gino Quinones is ready, put him in a left guard to vacate yeah. the vacated Voorhees spot. That's just me yeah. throwing it out there. I like it. Or, hear me out. Okay. Voorhees to left tackle, kick Justin Dietich mm -hmm. to left guard, put your most experienced guys on that left side, really shore it up, and then kick Gino to right guard. Or Mason Murphy to right guard. Yeah. Those are just those are just me spitballing. I love it. There are a lot of people that want USC to get the uh, ball first. Talking about get the ball first, scoring mentality. Yeah. And then I, if you remember the you know the beginning of the Fresno State game, USC got the ball first, scored a touchdown, got a three and out right away, and scored another touchdown. And that it sort of was that was kind of it. Like that was sort of like you get an early stop like that, unless you turn the ball over a bunch of times, probably not going to be good. Uh, we got one more voicemail and a few more emails, and we'll get to your uh, chat room questions, too. But here's another voicemail. Hey, Ryan Curtis, I'd like to bring up another point of our defense. They hit very hard against Rice. McCafferty was catching passes till he got put out the game. In the second game against Stanford, wasn't that Emmett Smith Jr. running all over us until he fumbled twice and got put out of the game? Then... Against Fresno State, this quarterback that everybody said was so tough, and he is. But he got put out of the game, and their best defensive player got put out of the game. Hmm. This is a whole different USC team. Let's go. Fight on. Curtis fired up. Uh, it's funny, Curtis. I dri I'm driving out to the desert a bunch, so I drive by Marino Valley, and I think of you when I see the sign for Marino Valley, so... Um, yeah, it's a different USC team. They're three and zero. They're scoring a lot of points. They're forcing turnovers. They're like second in the nation in sacks or something like that. Um, is it number one in turnover margin? I think it has to be. 10, yeah, 10 nationally. To yeah, number one. Like, Four in turnovers, just like pure turnovers. Yeah, awesome. Uh, but Curtis is fired up. I'm glad. I'm, it's good to see. Put him on that defense. Sounds like he wants to hit somebody. Curtis, where do you want to play? Like Mike or something? I'll get you in there. And uh, and do some pounding. He sounds like a nickel to me. So is he more nickel guy? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sir Eric of Troy sent a text message. Ryan and crew, uh, what do you think about Caleb Williams wearing that thick gold chain on the field? Because it was visible. I was af afraid a defender might grab it or uh, intentionally or unintentionally and choke him to death. Wow, oh, Jesus. Maybe I'm too old school. I would not allow if I were his coach. What say you guys, uh, Eric of Troy? I don't like. I, you see baseball players doing it all the time. Like you know, big gold chains like. I, I mean, I've played sports like my whole life. Like, I never felt comfortable with extraneous stuff like that. Like, um, I don't know. Did you? What about you, Chris? Were I you... did notice the chain. Yeah. I was like, he's wearing a chain. I probably should have put it in the game day ghost notes. I forgot to, but I, I saw him on a commercial for Monday Night Football too. Like, I think it was Caleb Monday Night Williams? Football. Yeah, Caleb Williams was like in a what? I can't remember what it was, but he was in a commercial, and I was like, oh, there's Caleb Williams, like in a commercial. So yeah, what you're saying is. It was a it, generic it, thing. It's like Caleb Williams is a football player. It didn't say, like, he did, wasn't wearing USC gear or anything. You could, we can Google that real quick, what it was. But he was on a commercial. He's like a legit commercial, like on TV. I don't think anyone's going to choke him to death. Uh, but 
here's the thing. He has the money to get it replaced if it gets uh, banged up. Just a little, you know, a little drip on the on the field. I don't think that's a. I don't think that's necessarily a problem. It's just the yeah. way college football is these days. For for me, the re- excuse me, the real concern is like wearing earrings. I feel like you're you're your I don't think anybody wears them but like if you get like Austin Jones like if he was wearing earrings when his helmet got ripped off that could have been bad uh, yeah there's I just don't yeah it's not about like I'm sure someone wears earrings no there people do yeah, uh, I think field. people put like tape over them or something yeah that's a that's a way to but still um, but still oh, like Mark, chain is like the, the safest Mark said it was a water commercial so it was some kind of water thing um, he is the sponsor for a non-alcoholic beverage a non-alcoholic beer. Oh, the athletic brewing. Yeah. So they put that up there. But there was also some sort of, I think this was different. I think it was like okay. a water. But th- yeah, thanks. Mark put that in the chat. It was like a, but I saw that. And I'm like, oh, there's Caleb Williams. But it was like total generic. You know, like though there's um like Damian Lillard. Like he's in like a, not Dos Equis, but he's like a Modelo commercial or something. And uh, he's like generically dressed. You know, he's like hitting shots. They're just playing against scrubs mm-hmm. in a, in some random gym. They, like they don't have the, whatever so uh let's see okay let's go to we got another let's do a text message um it's been 17 years and in a new era of nil is it time for usc to defy the ncaa if necessary and reinstate the relationship with reggie usc is not quote back until reggie bush is back that's from ryan i believe the he's reinstated yeah yeah. i believe the the relationship has been reinstated maybe perhaps we're talking about the Heisman, oh yeah, that or could be putting different. his number up, like number five or whatever, or putting like a image of him somewhere in the Coliseum. Or yeah. maybe that's what he's referring to. But the relationship is is back on. Yeah, now you just want to see more of the relationship. Exactly. Uh, as we move forward, people want him like, can he run out of the tunnel? Like, just know he's working Saturday mornings right. now. So he's he was in Nebraska. Wasn't yeah, he? he was in Nebraska. Um, so if, if they're, if they're doing like a USC game, like, I don't know if they would do USC, Utah, who owns that one, if that's a Fox game. Um, yeah, then he could be there. And you know, he did that before. You remember Urban Meyer was there and all that. Um, tapped up Marquis step. Yeah. Got a flag. Good. Got a flag for that. So lame ref. Corey, Corey, uh, emailed us and said, Hey, Ryan and Chris, any idea how USC practices Monday through Friday in regards to each specific day of the week? No pads Monday, full pads Tuesday, etc. Always enjoy your podcast. Keep up the great work. Fight on from Corey Corey. Uh, so Pete Tuesday. Carroll used to have things like no repeat Tuesday or like, I, I forget what it is. Turnover Tuesday, competition Wednesday, no repeat Thursday maybe. like I. So they had some things. I haven't heard any kind of those monikers for Lincoln Riley practices, but have you, Chris? No, but thir- uh, Tuesday is full pads. Wednesday is shells. Yeah. I'm not sure what Monday is. And Thursday, based on what you know, Grinch has said, that might just be shells. And that might be like more walkthrough stuff. Yeah. Because then they do mental. Through. They're doing like yeah. mental testing. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. So that's what that feels like. Nice. Uh, we got a couple more uh, emails and I'll get to the comments. Mark in the IE. Uh, number zero. So he's talking about Corey Foreman. If he can't make the play, he stops. He did the same thing at Corona Centennial. Centennial. Is there something coaching-wise they could do to correct that issue? The defense, all in all, plays very hard, but the defensive front is simply outmatched. Uh, coach, with uh, would four down linemen help a little? Absolutely love the show, Ryan. Been a long-time listener, Mark in the Im- Inland Empire. And Frank in Sacramento along the same lines. He says, after three games, I'm starting to think Corey Foreman may not be all that bad. He may be just playing out of position. He kind of... Uh, wait and hesitate attack guy, which could be a better suited as a linebacker. He's tall and could do some pass defense, maybe coming in on third down, filling some holes in the run game. What do you think? So a couple of questions on comments on Corey Foreman, Chris. Both different. One is basically saying he's a bust. Another one <laughs> saying the kid's got something. So very, obviously Corey Foreman is very polarizing he is. figure for you. Like the fans. former number one player in the country that happens. If he was just like a four star mm. or whatever, he wouldn't be getting this much attention. But because of his status, he has all this extra pressure and expectations. And I think Corey's played okay through the first, uh, you know, three games. You, you'd like a little bit more, but USC does have, you know, Solomon Byrne, who's, who is on fire right now and will probably be the starter moving forward until Romello Height 
gets healthy with that shoulder. You know, Corey, you know, as far as like maybe the stopping and not if he doesn't make the play, I mean, that's just basically effort, right? I mean, that's something you want to see. That's something you got to coach and practice. And that's what this defense is all about. You know, we hear it all the time, effort, strain. And you can coach that into a player. You know, that's something they just hit on over and over and over and over and over. So I think we'll see that grow more and more and more and more uh, as, you know, time goes on. But again, Corey just needs more time to develop more reps. Um, doesn't ha- doesn't have to have the pressure of being a starter. You know, it's Solomon Bird playing. I feel like I've said this a million times, but still young, missed a lot of time, you know, with some injury and didn't play a senior year. So he's technically a year behind in terms of development. So just give him a little more time, guys, before we, you know, to define his career moving forward. Exactly. And uh, I I would say, even if Romello Height comes back healthy, I don't know if you're... I think Bird's going to be your starter. Right. You know? Best, um, best man wins. Healthy man wins. He's... Uh, I mean, when we saw Height in there, which we thought was healthy, he just wasn't as productive as Bird has been, you know? And he probably has to do something with the shoulder just being, you know... Yeah, it's just not... It's just not the same, right? Um, let's pull up... Uh, some questions from the comments and we'll do okay um brandon says do you guys think there should be more rotation at wide receiver i feel like they have a pretty good wide receiver rotation yeah feels like they funnel guys in and out all the time you know you see rice see kind of hudson yeah. taj taj washington was a big factor in rice at the rice game and then you know, he got some targets in other games. It's not as much. Caught a big pass against Fresno State. Yeah. I think the rotation is fine. It yeah. seems like it's, it feels like it's a solid like seven to eight. Maybe they, they use and maybe they're referring to maybe like get Kyle Ford, uh, some more, some more burn, John Jackson, maybe a little bit more. Well, I guess the whole Gary Bryant thing is, is yeah. moot at this point. But well, speaking of, um, he said, uh, how many should we expect to follow Gary Bryant? I mean, there's going to be more. Tra- there's going to be transfers all the time. Yeah, Lincoln Riley talked about it. Like, there's, it's just, it's just the way it is now, you know. And uh, you try to educate guys, and there's just not going to be enough to go around. Um, and you know, great programs lose guys, you know. And there's going to be other programs that take advantage of it, you know. That we've seen. I do that. The uh, you know, orbiting your exes. USC football X's. There'll so be more X's, is what you're saying. Yeah, there, there's there's going to be, you know, there'll be more X's. But, you you know, some of them are doing great. You know, like a Brandon Campbell is like the leading rusher for Houston, you know. Um, guys like that, it's like you, you wish them well. Like they're doing a situation. Hunter Eccles was co-defensive player of the week um, for Arizona. Uh, which is good. I mean, you cover these guys for a long time. You're rooting for them. You hope they do well. But it's just, you know, that every situation is not going to work for everybody. And... Uh, yeah, so you're, you're going to see more guys transfer, but you're not you're not going to see, like, I don't think you'll see, like, Jordan Addison's transfer, like, out. You're going to get those guys in. You're going to lose guys that are going to be, like, could have been a starter, but maybe is it, you know, that kind of stuff. That's fringe guys? More fringe guys, yeah. Not the bona fide superstars. Um, question from Oscar. How many turnovers will the defense get versus Oregon State? So they've had four, four, and two, and one of them sort of like a, it was a, you know... Technically a turnover. It's a turnover, but, but it was a Hail Mary at the end of the half. So it was a cleaner game. Fresno State hadn't turned the ball over at all the whole season. So just to get a couple turnovers there, and that was a great sack fumble. I mean, obviously, you don't want to see Jake Hayner get hurt. The dude is a warrior. So you, prediction on turnovers, Chris? I don't think it's going to be four, but I think they could get two more. Yeah. I think they could definitely get a, two more, especially if they like get the lead and maybe they want to throw a little bit more. Yeah. Maybe maybe pick off Nolan or something like that. But And if they're going to run the ball a lot, you know, opportunities for fumbles, kind of rip one out. So I would probably say two. Yeah, I'd say two. If they don't, if they don't get any, uh, I think there's going to be a closer game than, than I think it's going to be. Um. Desmond had a question. How great is it to have a mobile quarterback at SC? It opens up so much of the playbook and honestly saves a lot of plays. Yeah, he had two rushing touchdowns in that game. Um, Gerard talks about this all the time, about having a mobile quarterback just helps out a college offense so much. 
when things go crazy and chaos that is college football, yeah. having a guy that can extend plays and you know make things happen with their with their legs is just just such a gift for offensive coordinators and for an offense to to give them another uh, dimension. Sure. So more teams should have dual co- dual threats is what uh, I think I'm getting at. Hundred uh, percent, Eddie. If both solos, okay. so he's talking about yeah. Solomon Tuialapupu. Solomon Bird. And Solomon Bird are on the field at the same time. Is it a duet? The brother Solomon. Mm-hmm. I like it. I, someone called Sol, Solomon Bird solo the other day, and I was like, is this right? Do, does only one of them get the solo nickname? Because it's sort of in the name, right? It's like just solo. It's not like they're both duos. I might, have to, I might have to address this. I might have to ask somebody. Someone, so... The department that you talk to about your turnover traveler, I would talk to them about this too. Right. Okay. That would be a good I'll one. Put to that get inquiry into. out. Yeah. Uh, inquire there. Uh, Armand has a question. He said the same question he sent in a couple weeks ago, and I'm curious how you're going to answer it. Is USC more likely to go 12 and 0 or 10 and 2? 10 and 2. I, I mean, that was my answer originally. Looking at the rest of the Pac-12. He's going to say 12-0, isn't he? No, I think I'm still going to say 10-2. and Because mm. I think the the hiccups are still possible. But I see a clearer path towards 12-0 and than I did. Then I still would say I would lean towards 10-2 and being a safer pick. Like if I had to bet my house on it or something, oh. you know, you're like, I'd feel safer with the, the like, because if you're, if you're betting at 12 and 0, you're like any little hiccup. You got, I mean, this weekend, you could lose this weekend. You could lose at Salt Lake City. I mean, yeah, I would still go 10 and 2. For sure. But good question. Uh, Desmond, how, oh, I'm sorry, we already had that one. Never mind. Um, and then one last one from Sid. Why are we not kicking the ball into the end zone on each kickoff? Uh, our kicker can and does it often, but then I see floaters that get returned to the 30 plus yard line consistently. And I'll do, uh, no one was more critical of USC special teams than me, especially when John Baxter was special teams coordinator. He was special teams coordinator for Fresno state. If you were, if you were grading on like whose offense was better, whose defense was better, Fresno state's special teams were definitely better. There you go. They were better. Official. He did a better job than USC on special teams. They had better returns. USC was returning inside the 25. I don't know why they don't fair catch those. Um, and they gave up some, you know, decent returns. They weren't like, it's like 10 yards of field position difference. For USC's offense, that doesn't really matter because you can do that in a second, you know. But if it was like a, if this was like an Iowa game, like if you were getting 10 yards better of field position average on special teams plays, that would be huge. But for this USC offense, and even the defense, the defense like gives up big plays, then forces a turnover or something. Getting an extra ten yards, I don't think matters either way. But maybe, obviously, USC is scoring a lot, a lot of more kickoffs for Alex Stathouse. Maybe his legs just getting tired, you know, kicking it all those times. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. He is middle of the pack in terms of touchback. I believe he has like a 53 percent touchback rate. Yeah, which isn't obviously super high. And actually, fun fact: Oregon State and USC are actually both last in the Pac-12 in opponent kickoff returns. So they're both, I think, USC's a, a, a giving up at least 25 yards per return. And Oregon State's about 28. And Oregon State gave up a 98-yard kickoff return against Montana State. So I think guys are going to have opportunities to return some kicks uh, in this one. Yeah. Uh, we got one last comment. Um, Jag. Jag plus. Sorry. I don't mean to be... I don't want to leave out the plus. Uh, two key, two key beavlets out for Saturday's game. Beavlets. Running back Trey Lowe and star tight end Luke Musgrave. You hate that I keep bringing up that I talked to Luke Musgrave at Pac-12 Media Day. You did. You did that meta. You brought him up, mentioned that you talked to him <laughs> by bringing up that I don't <laughs> like that you mentioned talking. Very, very well done. I like beavlets as well. Beavlets. That seems like something you would order. At a restaurant. Yeah. I have the beavlets with a side of uh, fries and the garlic mashed potatoes. Would you but, like gravy on that? Yeah, would you like gravy <laughs> on those beavlets? You know, Trey Lowe, just a reserve kind of running back, had I think close to 600 yards of all-purpose yardage last season. Yeah. So 
could have been a player, but you know, banged up. Not really that that big a deal. But Musgrave, as you mentioned, Ryan, one their top receiver, six foot six, was actually their leading receiver through the first two games for getting hurt in that final drive against Fresno State. Yeah, that is significant. You know, USC does has struggled a bit with those bigger tight ends, and taking him off the field does you know limit their passing game a little bit. They still have some weapons. Uh, Anthony Gould is a is a five foot eight slot guy who's made some plays. Had the ninety had a punt return, eighty yard punt return for a score. So he's got some moves. Treshawn Harrison, a former USC target, former Washington signee, I believe, is their leading receiver right now. You know he's kind of a big body too. So they have some weapons, but you know losing a guy like Musgrave is a blow. It is, and uh, it's funny that so if you remember Chance Nolan looked amazing against USC, 15 to 18. Um, he didn't really play that well. They basically just ran the ball last year. They're not as good as running the ball this year, um, but he's much more effective as a quarterback. So that'll be interesting to kind of see. And then you bring in Jack Coletto, the hammer, who you know had the game-winning uh, run in against Fresno State. Um, you know, Fullback, with, uh, running back, and linebacker. And, a rare two-way guy. And he, put, he was a quarterback. Yeah. He, he was, you know, crazy. Does it all. So they call him the hammer. He's got his own line of clothes, like the hammer. Uh, he's going to be someone, I've, when he comes in, I'm wondering, because you know what's going to happen. Do you wish you talked to him at Pac-12? No, he wasn't there. But um, I would talk to him. But can USC stop him when he comes in? That's going to be a good sign. Like, basically, we're bringing this dude. We're going to run block. He's going to run. He's basically going to catch the ball, you know, get the snap and run at you. Can you stop him? We'll see. Yeah. That'll be that'll be the thing. If they can't stop them, that's probably a bad sign for this defense. Uh, but even if they can't, it'll be closer than what you think. But USC will still cover the spread. It's it's less than a touchdown spread. It's like six and a half points. So, uh, all right. Well, that's going to wrap things up uh, here on the Peristyle Podcast and on our YouTube, uh, our simulcast on the YouTube live on YouTube. Thanks for everyone that was watching us uh, on YouTube. Wow, we had like almost two hundred people watching. Uh, appreciate that. Fair um, enough. I wasn't even ch- paying attention to that to see who was, uh, how many people were watching, but we had a lot of comments and everything. So thank you for that. And if you're listening on our regular podcast channels, thank you for doing that. But if you want to like catch it live, cause it's a little more raw, um, check that out too. Go over to youtube.com slash inside Troy. So thanks everyone, uh, for tuning in and listening and hope you guys enjoy this weekend's game. Uh, it will be on the Pac-12 Network. So make sure you stay t- tuned to our coverage at uscfootball.com because many of you can't watch it. But for Chris Trevino, I am Ryan Abraham signing out. Uh, hope you enjoyed the show and uh, we will talk to you next time.